Where you been? I saw My colleagues and guests, uh, why don't we begin our plenary session. We've got an important discussion uh, this morning on health care and the economy and uh, we're going to get underway if I could have everyone's attention. Feed on something. There you go. Hit it a couple of times. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, let's all find a seat and begin our discussion of uh, health care and the economy this morning. I want to welcome all the governors uh, back and uh, all of our guests as well. Um, I think this is going to be a great opportunity to have a moderated discussion on health care and its impact on the economy. Uh, I'm really uh, uh, pleased to uh, introduce the leader of our discussion today, Maria Bartiromo. Um, uh, you might uh, uh, find it uh, interesting to, uh, to know that someone who is the bearer of occasionally bad economic news has become a real celebrity in her own right, but Maria has certainly done that. You can see her every weekday afternoon on CNBC, giving the ups and downs of the day's market activity on uh, Closing Bell. She's also distinguished herself as the host and managing editor of the Wall Street Journal Report, which is the w number one financial news program in the United States. She's received high honors for the quality of her work. She's considered a true authority in her field. In fact, this past December, she was featured in the Financial Times as one of the 50 who shaped the decade. And we're really fortunate that she would take time on a weekend to be with the nation's governors today. She's a, a soon-to-be author as well. Her new book is entitled The Ten Laws of Enduring Success. Uh, it's out at the end of March, and we'll look forward to, uh, to seeing her, uh, her thoughts in this new book. So let's give a great NGA welcome to Maria Bartiromo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Governor Douglas. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for having me. Um, I find it increasingly interesting that as I talk about the economy on CNBC and on the Wall Street Journal report, um, almost all the time, health care is part of the discussion and the cost of health care and its impact on our economy. So I am uh, very pleased to be with you today to try and uh, talk about uh, controlling costs, ensuring more, and what we can see happen on a state by state level. I thought I would roam today. I'd love to make this conversation as interactive as possible. Um, I have asked uh, some of you to please jump in if you hear something that you agree with or you disagree with so that we could really have a dialogue here as opposed to a Q&A, me asking uh, each of you questions. And of course we all know the statistics and they are not pretty. Healthcare spending in 2007 reached two and a quarter trillion dollars we're talking about 16% of the gross domestic product. And uh, we continue to see a national and really international debate on how we will get our arms around this spiraling uh, expense that uh, continues to hurt our economy. Many of you have seen the impact on very, very important industries like the autos uh, and, and so many others uh, and how it has impacted our economy and our everyday life. So Governor Douglas, let me kick it off with you Give us the state of state from your standpoint in Vermont and tell us uh, where you think we can be on a state-by-state -state level. Well, Maria, um, I recall when I took office seven years ago looking at the uh, economic impact of rising health care costs on businesses and families in Vermont and the fiscal impact on state government because it's a large and increasing percentage of state spending every year. And I realized that we had to get those costs under control. 
Uh, there's a lot of debate in Washington and state capitals about how we structure paying for health care in America, whether it's a publicly funded plan or privately funded uh, system. Uh, but in the end, I, I'm not sure that matters, because if we don't get costs under control, if we don't bend that curve that is rising in multiples of inflation every year, we're going to be broke either way. So we put in place what's called the Blueprint for Health, uh, a strategy of uh, preventive care, of uh, managing chronic disease, of screening for chronic illness, of wellness, of, uh, of good nutrition. And, uh, and over the last uh, six or seven years, it's paid off. We focused on our Medicaid population, uh, which is uh, among the highest in the nation. We have 26 percent of our population on Medicaid. It's going to be 28 percent next year. So we have to control those costs. And with a waiver from the federal government, uh, we've realized about a quarter billion dollars of savings in our Medicaid program over a five-year period uh, through this strategy of managing chronic disease and providing preventive care. It's not something that happens overnight, and I think that's important for the American people to understand. It's about bending a curve and making progress over time. But we've shown over the last six or seven years that it really can be done, and I, I hope that we can uh, continue to talk as governors about initiatives we've had and, and uh, ideas that work in our state so that others can replicate them. Yeah. And, and just in the last couple of years, twice now, uh, national surveys have rated Vermont the healthiest state. Yeah, we'd like to look at some, some uh, plans that have worked, whether it's uh, Vermont, Massachusetts, and also some, uh, some uh, plans that may ha not have worked so well. Uh, Governor, let's talk about Tennessee. Let, let's talk about what happened when you put a plan forward back in the 1990s with all the best intentions, and yet, in retrospect, what went wrong? We had, uh, this was long before my time, a plan called TenCare. Uh, Tennessee in 1994 was kind of the Massachusetts uh, in, uh, of its day in terms of trying to expand uh, health care uh, through a massive series of waivers uh, uh, with the Medicaid program. Um, we, uh, we expanded dramatically the number of people on Medicaid by adding a number of categories. The uninsured, if you were uninsured, you could get on Medicaid. Um, if you were uninsurable, you had, uh, you had disease, diseases which uh, caused you to be rejected, you could get on. The problem was, it was just, I guess, the classic business problem that when you add as many benefits and as many people in a quick period of time, the expenses all came true perfectly on target on Monday morning. The savings, which were supposed to pay for all of those over time, um, not only stretched out a long time, but in many cases did not come to fruition. And we ended up, uh, you know, a decade later when I came in with a, a system which was just completely on its back. We were spending more money in the pharmacy benefit in Medicaid than we were spending in our higher education system. Uh, we were spending more money for one drug uh, on Medicaid than we spent to support the UT Medical School. Uh, and it just took, it, it took some very difficult actions to, uh, to bring it back, including substantial cuts and benefits, taking some people off the rolls. It was very painful. Um, but I do think there's a lesson there of maybe taking things a step at a time instead of just leaping off the end of the dock when it comes to uh, uh, how you deal with some of these issues. This is an important point, and, and Governor Manchin, you said earlier, you know, wh what, what is really important is and, uh, to consider is once you put a benefit in place, it's very tough to take it away. It's Can almost impossible. <laughs> uh, and that's what you'll find most of the governors here that will agree to that. Um, we took a position, Maria, that um, we had to start with our youngest. Uh, obesity in our children, I think all of our states had problems, but in America it's a problem. So in West Virginia it was a problem. We started healthy lifestyles, trying to get people to where we could spend as much time and effort with a child trying to keep them from getting a chronic illness or a life-threatening illness. And hopefully that would permeate up to their parents uh, to where we could change the whole uh, social